me, Ben, and Karen's walking in and walking out. Hey, I was going to take off my mask, but everybody told me I looked better with it on. So I, I guess I have to leave it on. Let's see. I'll move this because so, Karen's going to join me. Man, this is what a tangled web we weave. Damn. All right. There we go. Yeah, all right. And then I guess I'll move over. George Thorogood style. All right, so you can hear Karen a little if she when she joins us. Um, and you won't hear the fan as much. So that'll be good. Tonight's Wednesday. Um, it's uh, November 11th, 11 11. And we're going to do some viewer game analysis. This will be a shorter stream than usual. Karen will be here for about half an hour and then she'll leave. And I'll probably stream for about two hours. Uh, we have our month long tournament, round two. We had some new entries today. So we actually have 16 players playing across the hall in our uh, game 75. So that's good. We had some people join our chess club today and join the USCF and pay some entry fees. So, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, there's a tournament across the hall. Yeah. Exactly. I don't think I got notified that I was streaming yet. Let's see. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, all right. I have to delete a lot of YouTube comments. Man, you guys are harsh. Uh, hello. Let me refresh the stream. We'll cross the streams. See if we have any viewers. Zero viewers. All right. Hooray. I just got this mask um, from one of you guys. You guys sent us three masks. So Karen's wearing one, I'm wearing one, and Spencer's wearing one. It might have been two bishops of Varels. It might have been from uh, Appleside. Appleside sent me a DVD of every Chappelle show. So that was awesome. That's a very nice gift. And he said he's sending Perrier later, which is good because we we buy 48 Perriers a month for the club, but I was run out after like 17 days. So I probably should start buying 72. Uh, I just haven't done it yet. And if you guys send Perrier, that helps. We have, I think this was two bishops or apple side or somebody else who sent the masks. Um, I thought it was two bishops. <coughs> it was one of you. I might have gotten confused. I moved the microphone here. Anyway, when you send us stuff, we like it. Yeah. Yeah, I told them I, I was going to take the mask off, but you told me I looked better with it on. So. <laughs> anyway, this is the first. I've only had this mask for about an hour. So. Yeah. Hey, Max. Happy Veterans Day. Agreed. Go veterans. Viewers are also required to wear masks. That's right. Yeah. I have 55,555 followers. Good. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. VCDJ88. Hey, Virus Let's City. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to karaoke later. Boo. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, we do need a roar. We need to get some masks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Old Nine. Yeah. It's Karen. Hey, Teen Trance. Okay, so the first game was sent by the real Joe Money. Mm -hmm. He's 13 12, and he lost the game. Oh. But he didn't say what the time control was. Okay, so both players earned their rating on move two Bishop C4. Only one Grandmaster ever plays Bishop C4. I'll give you two hints. First name's Michael, and he lives in England. Adams? Yeah. Oh, when I say he lives in England, he actually lives in Florida. Mm. But he is from England. So. Mm -hmm. There's a noise. Casper VLD gifted a sub. Yay. Thank you. Thank you, Casper. Yeah. 
So this isn't good because, you know, you're trying to do that, but black can just play e6, and that's not well placed. Okay, so these moves are good. Okay, everybody's playing the goodest. I would probably get in d5 at some point, so I don't know if I'd play d6. I could also play a6, b5. So white lost to tempo by playing d3, d4. And actually, this position here, like if the bishop was on a normal square like that, that would be a normal Sicilian position, except white played d3, d4, so he's down a tempo. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the kind of mistake a lot of low-rated players make. When you see knights in these positions, which you can see in a Sicilian or in a uh, Scotch, right? It's almost always wrong to take this knight because after queen takes, your knight's gone. The pieces replaced it. So that doesn't help black. Black needs to get this bishop out, get a rook on the c file, try to play d5, etc. Now, not evaluation. I don't want that. I want lines here. So here, black should be a little better because white lost to tempo, normal position. And after this, probably white's better. Yeah, which the engine agrees with. Yeah, because now this is a nice square for the queen. And black made another move that would be attractive to a low-rated player, which I would tell my students never to play in a Sicilian, which is what move? Probably e5. Yeah, and that's what he played. No, I don't have COVID star one. So this, this is bad because see how the bishop is good now? See? Um, I see, but I was reading the chat for a Yeah, and yeah, then so. like d5 is weak. So this is a really terrible move, e5. So black played fine. And then if black, like getting a rook on the c file and getting his bishop out and playing d5, he just played two bad moves. Okay, a6 is good. Rook d1 is good. b5 is good. Bishop d5 seems quite bad. Yeah. It's not bad. It just seems bad. Bishop b3 is what I would play. But Bishop d5 is okay. Now, taking would normally be the right move, but here it's not a good move because after queen takes, we're threatening the rook. Black played bishop e6. This would be a good puzzle for you. Okay. Notice how the queen's attacked because mm -hmm. I said so, mm -hmm. and the bishop's attacked because I said so. Mm -hmm. So what, what does white do about that? Um, what does white do? Um, mm, that's a lot of emotes. We're not doing good with our trains. I mean... Mm. Well, you just take the bishop. Yeah. What? Which move? Hmm? I mean, I think you would just... Say uh, the chess move. Don't ever say, like, sentences. Bishop takes e7. I right. did. Right. You said take the bishop. That's not... Right. Well, white's white's move. I That's mean. right. You always have to say the move. You can't just talk about the move. Obviously, I that takes a bishop. say it different ways. Okay. So you want to play this move or this move? Um, bishop takes e7. That's correct. Now, if you don't play that move, then you're losing. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good puzzle because that's the only move. Right. Now white's winning because white won a pawn. Yay. Yay. Okay. Then queen d3 walks into a skewer, so now black's winning. See how this is a white squared bishop? Mm -hmm. So by keeping your pieces on dark squares, that's safe. However, black, white was very afraid of bishop h3. He's never been so scared. <laughs> so he played queen d3, and that prevents bishop h3. Mm -hmm. But he's, and this is something we talk about on the teaching streams like this one, like all the time, which is you see something your opponent's going to do, you do something about it, but you forget about everything else, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't. 
You, you can't li put your queen and rook here because the bishop c4 wins material. Hey, red or zero seven. Yeah, it is bishop takes. It says what a great mask. Yeah. Bishop takes gave the mask. So it's not two bishops of Atalus, but bishop takes. I said bishop takes. What? I thought I did. What? Okay. So white could play like king h1 or g3 or knight d5 to e3 defending g2. Okay, mm -hmm. now black is winning. Hey, okay. just Plato or Plato. Good. Okay. White has good compensation with his strong knight. Now in this position, if I have the black pieces, which I didn't, mm -hmm. I would be very concerned about my back rank since I don't have any left. Mm, true. So I would be trying to play h6 or h5. Okay, we'll see if that ends up hurting him since he's not mm. doing anything. Now black made a very poor move, f6, never do that. Now let, let's ask Karen. Notice how black is up the exchange for a pawn. So that says black's better, see? Mm -hmm. Then after f6, now who's better? So uh, now white's better. Well, yeah. well. See, equal, yeah. yeah. That's a poor move because first of all, it's f6, so it's very poor. It opens up the seventh rank, which is really bad. Yeah. It opens up this diagonal, which is bad. And the queen can't come back over here anymore. The queen is sort of stuck over here. Mm -hmm. So that's a very bad move. Okay, check, that's not a good move. King f8's okay. Then he played knife f5, that's a good move. Always play knife f5. Queen g6 is good, queen e2 is good, queen f7 is a strange move because notice how queen e2 attacks the pawn mm -hmm. so what black could play queen e8 defending the pawn but he played queen f7 so that's well, white white took the pawn and black took check this is all this is all fine okay now black made the strangest move in the history of chess okay notice how i said this is open on the seventh rank mm -hmm. So you could imagine a scenario where the queen would go on the seventh rank and then play like queen g7 mate. Well, you could imagine that could happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this position, the engine says after queen b3, black is winning. Because you, you can't play here because the queen's here. And then how are you gonna defend your b pawn? You're not. Instead he played king f7 walking into the seventh rank. That's a good move except for one thing. That's not a good move. Mm. So now this move wins and this move wins. So here the position's better for black actually because he's still up the exchange for a pawn and queen b3 would win and he walks into checkmate. Okay, this is a quicker checkmate. And also, even if you didn't see the checkmate, which is fine, you can see the queen's forking the, you know, this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so he played here, which also wins. Then black went back because no fight, and then mate. Never play f6. Mm -hmm. Never yeah. play f6. So you you guys keep complaining about YouTube. It's down right now. Ooh, ooh. Santan wants to know, are you going to wear a mask the entire stream? And then he just took it off. Yes. <laughs> is this YouTube? Very good question. <laughs> it, it is YouTube if you're watching it on uh, Friday. Yeah. Or even after Friday. Um, YouTube Ritchie is down. Oh. Has a chess question. Who does? Why not Queen B1? Who does? Queen takes E4. Who has a question? Instead oh. of Queen B3. That doesn't sound like a question. Okay. So he says instead of this winning move, why not play this move? I was looking at that right. too. Right. Bonarici doesn't know that queens move sideways. Yeah. yeah. He thought that you could take this, and he didn't know that. He thought queens just moved diagonal. Oh, yeah, I see. Right, and the reason he thought that was a lot of the queen moves this game have been diagonal. Yeah. Right? Like queen here, queen, you know, queen here. Same for white. Queen here, queen here. So it's understandable. Yeah. Yeah, the queen's defending the e4 pawn. Yeah, he says, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, just so... teasing him, of course. But... Oh, okay, so we're getting extra people because YouTube's down. We have a normal, but look at King F7 walking into Queen E7 check. I saw that. I'm not going to humiliate yeah, that's the not, gentleman further. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> now, as you guys all know, I have my sayings. I don't explain my sayings because there's no reason to. So let me give you an example. 
when you were a kid, which is like now, your parents said don't run in the street. Mm -hmm. And there could be several reasons for that. Okay, different vehicles could hit you. But the other reason is a lot of people do things absent-mindedly. They don't know they're doing it, right? You're like, oh, yeah, I was doing that, right? Mm -hmm. And so you might, if you used your brain, okay, and you said, hmm, if I go in the street, something might hit me. So as a child, you think, hmm, okay, but you don't do that as a child. As a child, you just go la, 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 and just do whatever you want. So if somehow in your brain you're not allowed to go in the street, then you might not absentmindedly go into the street and get hit by a car, right? Because you don't go in the street. If your mom is like, okay, go in the street, but make sure you look for cars, then you go in the street all you want. Then when you're not thinking and you're just like, la, 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 you might just walk into the street. Okay, this is why I say never play F6. And you guys in the chat are like, why not? Why can't I play F6? It seems good to me. And then this is what happens. You get checkmated. I could explain to you why not to play F6, but that's not going to help you. You're just, you know, you're going to be like, okay, Ben said don't play F6 for this reason. So I'm going to look out for that reason. You don't do that. Just, just don't play F6. Okay. Now in this game, Black played F6. And you guys are like, I don't understand. Don't play F6. And then he got mated three moves later. Okay. Now, now do you understand? No, you don't. Ben feels strongly about and not only F6. that. And not only that. Now, if you if you were on Twitter today and you follow a Gadmador, which yes. a lot of people do, mm -hmm. what did he him. post today? He posted never play F six. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's, and then people like did at me and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I already saw it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at, so y you don't want the whole seventh rank open so a queen and a rook can checkmate you. Conversely, White didn't play F three, but if he had like this pawn was here and this pawn was here, then his king would be open on the seventh rank. Then Bonarici's moves might make some sense, like queen check and queen check and you know, get that king attacked. So you can't you can't let Bonarici's moves make any sense, so don't play F3 or F6. Yeah. Anyway, terrible. And, and by the way, a lot of people on the stream, and not on the stream, just everybody, they're always very interested in esoteric, you know, complicated, interesting chess ideas, and then they hang mate in one. So, like, don't hang mate in one, don't hang mate in two, don't hang your queen, and you guys claim that you know that, and then every game you do all that, you hang mate in one, hang your queen. Well, you do it every game. I'm like, you said you knew it. Yeah, I forgot. So, here, king f7, walking into queen e7 and queen b7... I, I, now, I'm not allowed to say crazy like Fox News anymore because everybody's leaving Fox News because they're not crazy enough. Mm. And they're going to Newsmax and OANN. Yeah. I heard that Trump might start his own channel. Right. Yeah, so Fox News is finished. They have to get a new shtick because they're not as crazy as the other two news things I mentioned. And then when Trump starts the Trump News Network, they're going to be the fourth craziest. So you might as well just not be crazy because you can't compete anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing. They're transitioning to not being crazy because the other places are just crazy. <laughs> it's not a joke. That's uh. true. Right? They back me up. Okay. So saying crazy like Fox News isn't funny anymore. You could say crazy like, you know, OANN mm -hmm. and Newsmax and Trump News Network. But, you know, terrible. Yeah. You feel like everyone makes bad moves? It's a trap 79? That's right. He's trying to move his king up in the ending. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Mc <laughs> McDonald Trump. <laughs> I like that yeah. frosty ball rock. Yeah, there's a big... Oh, the people who really like Trump, they really hate Fox News now. Oh, uh, the, yeah? Yeah, they're marching against... Yeah, because they'll never forgive Fox News... First of all, Fox News said that Biden won the election, so they're mad about that. Yeah. But they're madder about something else, which doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. They're madder that they called Arizona last week. They're still mad about that. Yeah. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Fox News said that Biden wins Arizona. Six days later, even CNN didn't say he won Arizona. Mm. Right? Nobody did. Just Fox News did. Oh, okay. Right? And they're like, why? And then the Trump people are like calling Fox News and saying, you got to like unreport that. No. One thing about Fox News, and this is why I have the, one of the reasons I have the, their app on my phone, 
is they always they are first with the news, and then they apologize later if they're wrong. Right. Yeah, they're so always they are. first. They're first. Them and TMZ. No, I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah. I remember when Tom Petty died. He wasn't dead. I remember that. They said Tom Petty's dead, like either TMZ or Fox News. Mm -hmm. And then Tom Petty's daughter said, no, he's not. And they said, well, he'll die tomorrow, maybe. And he, he did die in like 30 hours after uh, they said it. But they said he was dead and he was alive. Oh, uh, yeah. He's I was like, I'm, not, I'm not dead. What? And they said, yeah, you'll be dead tomorrow. Don't worry about it. So he was dead tomorrow. So, yeah. 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 Fox News called Arizona the night. The polls closed. That's right. There's a very funny video on, on uh, Twitter which Trump put on. Trump said, look at this video. Mm -hmm. It's poll workers taking the thing you, they dropped the, poll, the the ballot in, which I did, and they're emptying it out and putting it in a bag and taking it to the poll, like, to count. Mm -hmm. And this w woman reporter, you don't see her. She doesn't have the camera on her. She's, like, using a phone or something. Mm -hmm. She's like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, we're taking these votes. She says, well, why are you doing it now? And they're like, like, what do you mean? Like, this is what we do. This is our job. And she says, do you have any identification? The guy's like, here. Like, it's on his thing. And then she's like, I'm going to record this. And they're like, okay. And she sounds really mad. And then at some point she's getting, he's like, how many do you have? How many more do you have? And they're like, whatever's in here. And then she's, then she, they, can you stand six feet away? You're too close. And then, then at the end, they're like, you're not wearing a mask. And she's like, oh, you know. And you never see her. Mm. But she's like, what are you guys doing? They're like, our job, we're taking the votes. And then Trump posted that and said, what is this? Why are they doing that? Mm. They're like, where you vote, they were taking the votes. So that's what they do. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that was funny when they're like, you're not wearing a mask and you don't see her. <laughs> yeah, they got them good. They were like really bored. They were like putting the votes in a bag and they were like, oh, I hate this job. It's our job. Yeah, DK79, there's going to be a Senate runoff. Two of them. Oh, yeah. All right, for a trillion dollars, name the four candidates. Before she does that, um, hold on, hold on. Hey, Vegas, I want to bet a million dollars against my wife. Okay, thank you. <laughs> There's yes. no way I'm going to know. Okay, Ossoff Osso uh -huh. and Loeffler. Uh -huh. uh, it's going to be rough for the others. Loss, and, uh, Ossoff and Loeffler are different races. Okay. They're not running against Warnock each other. Yeah, close enough. It's Warnock. Okay, Warnock. That's, well, Warnock's running against Loeffler. Right, who's now you got to figure out who Ossoff's running against. Then I lose my Vegas bet. Darn. Um... Purdue. That's correct. Yes. I was going to say you don't know because you're chicken. Where's my money? Hey, Vegas. Just kidding. All right. We lost a million dollars on the Vegas I bet. I thought I was getting a trillion. Right, right. We lost a million on the Vegas bet, but we won a trillion on your bet. So that was good. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, I got good. them. Yeah. Go subs. Man, we lost 100 subs. I knew it was Purdue. Now, Karen's last name is Boyd. B-O-Y-D. We don't need any more Karens in the... Yeah. Yeah, look at this guy with Kelly Loeffler. He gave her an umlaut over the O. Yeah, that's pretty good. Go kangaroo. Very fancy. I don't think she does that, but I don't think she knows what that is. <laughs> yeah. We voted for Ossoff before. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Martin, age 2323. So far, he has a, a loss and a draw. Lost the first one. He drew this one. Now he goes for the win. Ossoff. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We still haven't had a train, and I've been streaming for 23 minutes. Man, tough, tough stream. Okay, so we got that one. That was good until the very end of the game. Yeah. All right, now here we have a draw. Oh. So we have a 1,200 drawing a 1,900. Since Karen is here, she approves of that result. Yeah. Karen always likes to see a 1,200. Who are the other people, too? What's that? Nothing. Who? I was just going to say who I was there. Okay, so we got this. It's, the guy who was white is 1,200, and black is 1,987. Also, black is Yasser's favorite player, Pawn Grubber. Because, you know, he's a Pawn Grubber. Mm. He's a Pawn Grubber from way back. Do I look better with or without the mask? Ross Pro 2024. He died many years ago. So it'd be hard for him to run. This this game ended in a draw. Jay Groges twenty eight oh one subscribed. Hooray! Barely a GM. Yes, there's alternate account. That's right. 
Okay, so white is 1200 something and black is 1900 something. All right, we got some interesting still theory. I actually play bishop e7 with black, but knight takes e4 is the main move. Hey, Jay Wolfant. It's fine play from both sides. Very good play. Mm -hmm. Black has a fine position. You know what? I think I've looked at this game before. I'm sure I've looked at this game before. This is the game. Let me see. Yeah, I've already analyzed this game. All right. On, on the stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So. Maybe they're not even here. I think. Yeah, I del I'll delete that because I already did that one. Oh, okay. That happens. People post the game more than once or we don't delete it. Yeah. What's happening here? <laughs> We chess 2200, 2400. You know what that means? Uh, this is lead chess. You know what that means in chess.com? Um, no. It's like 800 versus a 900. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so chess guy's white. And he said, thank you for your previous analysis. I wanted to post a game where I played F3 and 1. This is one day per move. My rating is provisional. My opponent's rating is not provisional. I'm conflicted, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, don't ever, don't ever annotate your game ever. Any of you. Well, okay. that's the opposite of what yeah, you tell don't, me. Don't ever do that. To do no, you game. should do that when you're, not, not for me. I just not, <laughs> no, yeah. when, when you have a coach at home, then you should definitely do that. But when you post on, Discord, I, it just goes forever. You know, I can't be reading no. that. No. Hey, which pawn? Yeah. He, his, he uses an engine. Okay. So uh, white is our hero. These games were played on Lee Chess one day a move. So, hey, yeah. Hey, Joe, what? I thought he said this was F3 and a dragon. What? I don't see any F3 here. White never played F3 this game. Well, he did. He played at the very end. Okay. Oh, at the end. Hey, Adam Phelan. I thought he said this was a dragon. I'm getting confused. Hmm. Um, oh, I want to post a game which I played F3 and 1. But I decided to post the game where I played very badly and played F3 and lost. Oh, you lost this game. Oh, okay. So he had a dragon game he won with F3, but he decided not to post that. I didn't read what he wrote because it was oh, too much. This is a game where he played F3 and lost. That makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's white. And this is a Rui Lopez main, 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 main line. Okay, that's a very unusual move, and it's considered bad. You want to play bishop g4 when the pawn's on d4, so there's pressure on the pawn. Here your bishop just gets trapped. So grandmasters don't play bishop g4 here. GM Canty is raiding with a party of 34. Yay. Mr. Canty. I thank knew Canty before you were born. Yay. Thank you, GM Canty. I didn't understand what she meant about... Uh, can you repeat what you said? Why Always repeat. Yeah. Now, let's say black castles, which is the main move. Okay. After D4, then you can trade on D4 and play Bishop G4, and you're putting pressure on the D pawn because you're pinning the knight. This is a theoretical position. If the person doesn't play d4, which they didn't, then bishop g4 makes less sense because there's no pressure on d4. So now after h3, you're either going to give the two bishops away for nothing, mm -hmm. or you're going to get your bishop trapped here on the king's side where it can't move ever. Mm -hmm. and then white's going to play d3 and put his knight on g3, and this is considered a very poor move. Now let's go back. Let me see the other scenario. I want to go back. Okay. Well, we will. White has a slight advantage, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.4. Then after this, white has a much bigger advantage. See, now the numbers are high. So that's mm -hmm. not good. I see that. The difference is there's pressure on the D4 pawn because the knight is pinned. There is no pressure on D4 when there's no pawn there. You can't play knight here. So this bishop is just going to get trapped, and there's no threats for black. Now... Let's look at the Grunfeld, because you like the Grunfeld. Mm -hmm. Also, you know what the Grunfeld is. Barely. Also, you can name Grunfeld's first name. <laughs> no. Right. Okay, there's two Grunfeld Grandmasters. The one that's alive is Yehuda Grunfeld from Israel. The mm -hmm. one it's named after is Ernst Grunfeld. 
It's important to be earnest. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, this pawn's attacked by the bishop and the queen. The next two moves, black could play c5 and knight c6 and attack them more. Mm -hmm. Now, if the knight defends the pawn, often black wants to play bishop g4 pinning the knight, just like in the variation we looked at. Mm -hmm. So one of the main lines is to play knight e2. So if the bishop pins, we just block the pin. So that way the knight's protecting that. If you're going to play knight f3, which is fine, you can't play bishop here, which is aggressive. You have to play here because you're waiting for that move. Right. And now you can see there's tremendous pressure on the d4 pawn. See, mm -hmm. and then after bishop g4, for example, which usually they castle first. Mm -hmm. Okay, bishop g4. and Okay. So w when, when there's a knight on f3 and there's a pawn on d4, the bishop and then this bishop, and you can see even like in the peers. Okay, I could just make up a line. Probably I would just want to see the position we were looking at again okay. a little bit slower. Okay, so you see this? Uh -huh. Okay, so now the bishop's attacking the pawn, the bishop's pinning the knight, so white has to figure out how to take care of that. Mm -hmm. If instead I cheated and I just played like d3, I didn't play d4, okay? Now this move doesn't make any sense. Right. I go here and then why'd you go there? You go there because you take the knight, then you could take my d-pawn. You can't take my d-pawn if it's not under pressure. Mm -hmm. So you don't play bishop here for no reason. You play it because you're you're pressuring the, you know, the, the d-pawn that's defended by the knight. Can I get out there? Can you go back though? Can I see the position? We're definitely going to go back because we have to look at the game. <laughs> yeah. So in this but. position, no grandmaster would play bishop g4. They would castle. Show now, me the now, situation. If, now, now in this position, the okay. main... Yeah, I'm going to show you all that. The main move... Is h3. Now there is no bishop g4, oh, yeah. and there never will be. If you play d4, which is fine, mm -hmm. okay, now you have to deal with bishop to g4, and you're pinning the knight to the queen, and the knight and the queen are both protecting the d4 pawn. Oh, I see, and there's two attack. Okay. Right. Well, it doesn't matter if it wins or doesn't win, or there's attack or there's not an attack, it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like there's something going on here. There's a reason to play bishop g4. When, when white black played it, there was no reason to play bishop g4. Right. Okay. And, then, and then white correctly played d3. And now this bishop will be better served being here or here. Here it's just going to be trapped. Mm -hmm. So now white can play knight here, knight here, knight here, attacking the bishop and g4 and knight h4. And the bishop is just terrible here. It's blocked forever. So you can see the engine likes white quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Now... What happens is with a lot of low-rated players like these guys, and again, they're probably like a thousand strength because they're on lead chess, is they just make random legal moves, no opening knowledge, nothing going on. 309 centidus from Lancer Ulysses. Thank you. You got to have a reason for your moves. And since this bishop is quite good, if... Black is just going to trap his own bishop, then maybe bishop here would be better and trade off your bishop for that great bishop. Okay. Or, conversely, you could play bishop b7, so later in the game you could have, you know, attack on the diagonal. So bishop g4, no, no grandmaster would ever play that. They would all castle here. And then there's a million grandmaster. Okay, so white has a big advantage. I don't really see how it gets trapped, though. Well, when it's here, it can't move. Oh, it just okay. sits there and it can't I mean, move. Just I don't mean you lose it. In. It can't move. Okay. It's bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so white's playing great. Nobody's ever played as good as white mm -hmm. has played. Yeah, definitely using an engine. Thank you, Lancer Ulysses, for all those centuries. Yeah, if you want to play good players, you have to play on chess.com. Lead chess is for lower-rated players who don't want to pay membership fees and just you know, free... Thank you, Sorgina. Yeah. But if you want to play grandmasters like me and other grandmasters, you got to play on chess.com. Okay. Um, also, the cheating detection is better on chess.com than on Lee Chess. Um, all right. So knight h4 is good because you want to play knife f5. Mm -hmm. You got two knives, one for each f5. Okay. And you play knight hf5. Good. You could also play queen f3. You know, getting control of the king side here. Put it in h. A4 is fine. B4 is legal. I can't say it's not legal. 
I don't know why you'd play queen e2 instead of queen f3. Queen f3 is just more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Bishop d2 is very passive. Yeah, so queen e2, bishop d2 are both quite bad. Basically, in this position, black's only hope is to play d5. I can't really find another move for black. So you have the pawn break. Mm -hmm. Spencer would like that. Yeah. I don't see like how black does anything, mm. right? But d5, you're doing something. So you don't want your queen on e2. Your queen could be on f3 controlling d5. You don't want your queen in the rook lined up. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. You could also play a5 and play bishop a4 or bishop b3. So queen e2 is, a, is an error. Bishop d2 doesn't make any sense. Yeah, this is just this is just a very poor move. Okay, rook b8, he should have played d5. Whoa, d4, that's crazy. You see how the queen and the rook are lined up? Yes. Yeah, you don't play d4 and open up those five. That doesn't, that's bad. Mm -hmm. Now black is better all of a sudden. So white made three mistakes in a row, but d4 is an actual mistake. That loses material probably. Now the numbers are crazy. Okay, so ed4 is correct because now there's some tricks here. Mm hmm takes knight takes is good good now you see all these guys attacking e4 if, if only the queen was on f3 so the rook would be defending it instead of the queen terrible okay put his queen over there on the side very dangerous d5 is excellent okay now this move is bad because of the jokes that i make about never play f3 which are not jokes mm -hmm. but this is especially bad yeah, like if Magnus was here now and he was like, I'm Magnus, look at me. And then he saw F3, he would like fall out of his chair. Yeah, you, F3 is one of the worst moves on the board. Obviously, this move is worse, but it's close. Close. Yeah, I mean, I I know F3 is not good here. That's really bad here. This is a very good puzzle for you, actually. Especially because you've already played H, H3. No, this is a good puzzle for you. Black to play and win. Black mm -hmm. has a move that wins material. Oh, okay. And then white resigned. Um, let's see. It's funny how black played bishop f8 and then white fell apart. They're crazy. Remember when black played bishop f8? Then he opened up uh, for his rook. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. It was, it was like f in this position, he played bishop f8, which opened up the line for his rook, and then white played d4. No, you, no. Uh. Now he's op opening up on the bubble up. All right, and now Black made the winning move and I don't White know. resigned. You, you, I was trying to look, and then you moved Bla it. Black made the winning move, and White resigned. Okay. And okay. these guys aren't even, they're not even, like, donating or anything. Terrible. Um, Seven hundred thirty-three players. What ha viewers, what happened? Why don't we have, like, 300? <laughs> Right, G4 is also good, Spencer. I thought he played G4 earlier. Sorry gave 109 cent to dues. Thank you. And then what else happened? J Groges gave 200 cent to dues. How come we don't have a train? I keep saying this guy gave this. What's going on? 200, 3. Is it too far you apart? You could play um, B3. Right, but you have to it's over there. Okay. you have to figure out why f three is bad. Oh yeah, f three. Okay, so f three undefends what? Um, you pointed it out because you said white played h three earlier. Well, I mean e three. I mean yeah, keep, e3. right, keep going. Oh, in the night. Too. Right, so that night's not defended. But okay. I don't see anybody That's attacking okay. the night. That's okay. Now, what else isn't defended? <clears throat> is this defended? Is the like look at the pieces. What's not defended? Well, I see that the bishop... 200 cents it is from Kif. I need two needs... Do, do we have a train and I don't see it? Okay, there's the train. Thanks, oh, yeah. thanks Can Can. You. The bishop on E2 is not defended. Also C2. And C2. Um, well, I'm sorry, C2. I know you meant C2. And also... Um, yeah? D2, but I don't right. see anything attacking. Right. So how do you... So what but would meat, what other bishops what would, meat, what would Meatloaf do? He would say there's three pieces, yeah, and you have to attack two of them. So what would he say? Um, two out of three ain't bad. Ain't bad. Right. So how do you attack two of those three pieces? Um. Now before you answer, because mm -hmm. you like when I leave and then come back and then you get mad at me for asking you. 
You watching? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, a game that I played 15, 20 years ago. This is the game. Okay? Okay. But 15, 20 years ago. Sorry, it was Knight C3. Okay. Um, I was wrong about the move order. This is against Ray Garrison, a 1900 player in Ann Arbor. Yeah. Okay, this isn't protected, you agree. Mm-hmm. And this isn't protected, you also agree. Yes. What did I do to attack both of them? Um, uh, 100 cent to do's for Nick Rump Roast. C7. Dork the Cat, 100 cent to do's, go train. Lancer Ulysses, 99 cent to do's. Right. Now, when I play mm-hmm. Queen C7, notice this fork. Okay, mm-hmm. try to remember that for later, okay? Now my opponent, you watching? Yeah. He played d3, defending this and defending that. Nice. And then I played check, and then he resigned because he lost his bishop. Okay. That's a game I played before you were born. Okay. Now, f3, how can we attack two of these three pieces as the aforementioned game showed how to do? Oh, yeah. I mean, queen c7. Mm-hmm. So if you know every game ever played in history, you can find those tactics in later games, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay. So queen c7 was played, attacking the knight and the bishop. Mm-hmm. Now, we've said this on stream many times. You guys are like a knight's worth three and a rook is worth five because my chess book said so and my, my mom said so when she taught me chess. Now, in this position, material is equal. Yeah. In this position. It is. Okay? All right. And black is going to win a piece. Mm-hmm. So that means the engine should say black is going to be like plus three. Based on that, right? Mm-hmm. Now what does the engine say? Plus what for black? On mm-hmm. 7.62. Right. Right. So it's, it's, when you lose a piece, it's over. Yeah. Can't be losing no, no. piece. Now you guys on, on the internet, you guys are like, hey, Grandmaster Feingold. If you played a slow chess game with Magnus Carlsen and you were up a knight or a rook, what would happen? He would resign. That's what would happen. Okay, now if we're playing a blitz game, then I would resign. But we're playing a slow game, so be quiet. Okay, by the way, it's very funny. I'm watching a poker video today from 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, that wasn't from 20 years, 10 years ago. It was high stakes poker where they play with cash instead of a tournament. Mm-hmm. So there's like cash on the table. And one of the guys is a famous director, writer, but he's rich, so he gets to play too. Um, his name is... I forgot his name. But, uh, you guys all know in the chat. Uh, he, he directed or wrote Blow. If You, you guys know Blow, because that's like the only thing you guys know. Uh, Cassavetes, one of the Cassavetes. There's like three of them, but he's one of them. Okay. So... <laughs> I thought of it because I was making fun of them, like, hey, Grandmaster Feingold, can I was doing this mm-hmm. with my hands? Okay. Yeah. So they asked Cassavetes, how did you write blow? And he did this. Yeah. <laughs> he showed them. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So after Queen C7, White resigned. Okay. Come on, we're dying. The train's dying here. Let's go. Okay. okay after so, this, I'm so, departing. So you see that? Mm-hmm. Terrible. Departed is another director. Okay. <laughs> Now, even if F3 wasn't available, even if Queen C7 wasn't available, which wins a piece, yeah. this is an awful move. You weaken all the white squares around your king. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But it's bad when all your pieces are hanging. You can't, you know, it's Queen C7. These things happen. Mm-hmm. What's funny is white played very well that game until he didn't. What, the game kept going? I thought he resigned. Queen D3, then he resigned? What? Yeah. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Yeah. Anyway, that was a very poor game for White after the middle game started. Like, Thank you for those 100 cents you days, Market Sands. Like, in this position, White played like Super GM, and Black did not. And White has a very nice advantage. Magnus Carlsen would take White all day in this position. And then White made basically all bad moves. He didn't make any move that wasn't bad. Uh-huh. Okay, Queen E2 is a little bad. Bishop D2 is more bad. D4 is the worst move of the game so far. Queen takes a6 is bad, and f3 is a blunder. I and mean, he's, I mean, but before that, he played perfect. Perfect. Magnus Carlsen would be like, great, I'll take that position. Thank Jay you, Wolfen Nick. subscribed. Thank you, Nick Rumpros, for those 100 cents you do. 
and, and, and by the way, this is a big problem with lower rated players. Yeah. Is they they like to boast about these games. Oh, I played really well, and then I made a mistake. You, you can't play really well and then not play really well. You have to always play really well. You, when you make five, six mistakes in a row, you can't be proud of yourself. You got to be like, man, I got to stop doing that. Okay. So even though White was better, clearly better, then a few moves later, his opponent's plus eight because he just makes all bad moves, doesn't understand the position. And White was doing great. I mean, like Knight here, Knight, he was just playing great. And then D4 was the beginning of the end. You can't play D4 because this is lined up here. And in my opinion, mm -hmm. and my opinion's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, my opinion is White played D4 because he was tempted by Queen A6. He was like, oh man, if I could play Queen A6, my whole life is improved. Mm -hmm. Right? He didn't want to play strategically correctly. He wanted to play D4 and do a discovered attack on the A pawn. That was all he cared about. I have spoken. Well, you got to do what you can do. Right. Now, <laughs> now, hold on. Remember I was making fun of their ratings? Now you guys agree. These are lead chess. White was 2,200 and black was 2,400. Right? And I said like 1,900. Yeah. That's true. They're still better than me. <laughs> 812 viewers a do. Go back to YouTube. Oh, wait a minute. How can YouTube not work? What are, the, what are the exclaims, Joe Adam? Raj doesn't understand that I have 900 games in the queue to look at. Uh -huh. Raj thinks I have nothing to do. Want to look at some game? First of all, Raj, always sack the exchange. If you want to understand exchange sacrifices, and by what I mean is not understand them, there's a famous game that Ulf Anderson beat Karpov in the early 1970s, between 73 and 75, I believe. And... He was black in some kind of hedgehog type position. And Ulf Anderson sacked the exchange. And you guys will never understand why. And then about 80 moves later, he beat Karpov. Always sack the exchange. Wow, YouTube is still down. That is a while, a long time for that to be down. Kangaroo says the, the Karpov-Anderson is a great game. Now, do you remember uh, Jacob from St. Louis? The mm -hmm. tall guy? The I know who he is. Okay. His favorite player of all time is Ulf Anderson. Confusing uh, okay. audience. He's the only person in the world whose favorite favorite player is Ulf Anderson. Nobody else has ever said that. Yeah, but he did. That's probably true. Yeah, Ulf Anderson won a lot of boring, you know, end games. Mm -hmm. Cutest GM ever, says Puria Far. Eight hundred viewers. That is cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Ulf Anderson wouldn't say he's his favorite player. No, absolutely not. Yeah, lots of go outside at this rate. That's right. Yeah. Nobody's giving condolences. I mentioned your father passed away on YouTube yesterday or mm. here. And then nobody's saying nothing. Like, oh, oh Karen, I feel bad. You know, mm. you guys are terrible. They can't remember. Like whatever like if I say don't play F three, they're like, I don't know what Ben said, F three. Mm. So that's why if I told them they're like, I don't remember that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, ben did say they can't remember anything. Well people pop in two thousand centages. Go find ones. Right. I didn't tell my people. Yeah. I told So they them. didn't know. Yeah. I do eat sushi. I eat vegan sushi. I had vegan sushi yesterday. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. Thank you, Kangaroo. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, Kangaroo, and all my people on the stream. I just didn't want to talk about it yet. That's right. Young Croquetta subscribed. So I feel I, bad that I didn't mention it. I lost my dad six years ago and several months, and I still upset about it every day. We have pictures of him in the house. So when I see it, I get upset. And when I don't mm. see it, I get upset. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Doug Stone. Um, Lee Chess has a lot of very, very low-rated, weak beginner players on it. Um, so if you live on the earth and you go to the internet and play chess and your strength is between zero and a thousand... There's more of you on Lee Chess than chess.com. Five dollars. Mm. Thank you, old nine. Thank you, everybody. But if you're a grandmaster or an IM, it's much, much, much more likely you're, you're going to be on chess.com. By the way, I'll tell you something funny today. Then you mm -hmm. can go. I was watching the very, 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 very bad commentary by Danny Wrench and Robert Hess mm -hmm. on chess.com. 
Like, I saw part of they it. See, they say no, nothing they say is right. They're like, oh, that's terrible. That means it's good. Yeah. Like, oh, that's an excellent move. That means it's terrible. Okay. Whatever they, they oh, Aronia has a big advantage. That means he's lost. Mm -hmm. They don't say anything right ever. So if I ever complain to Spencer about this, Spencer says, I agree. And why are you watching their dumb commentary? Why don't you watch real commentary over at Chess 24? Mm. So I did. And the commentary at Chess 24 is Gustafson and Svidler. And it's funny, they don't indicate it. This is intentional, obviously. They don't indicate in any way this is a chess.com event. They don't put anything, they don't talk about chess. It's, a chess, it's played on chess.com and chess.com is sponsoring it. Hmm. But they don't, they just pretend like it's some event. Okay. And, and basically, Svidler talks and goes to some, tries to make a joke occasionally. Here's the, my point. Mm -hmm. On chess.com, the, the Twitch that I was watching, there were between 6,000 and 10,000 viewers. And when Fedoseev was playing Faruja, there was like 20,000 viewers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now sit down when I tell you this. I want you guys to sit down. Give me a chance to sit down. Okay. I'll let you guess. All right. Okay. Whatever number you guess, guess a lower one. I'm giving you help. Okay. Then when you get that number, guess a lower one. Okay. Then when you get that number, guess a lower one. So you, have, right. to, you have to like, okay. How many viewers on Twitch to Chess 24 have? With Gustafsson and Svidler. What, Today? We, right. Now remember. Remember what I said to do. Well, I mean. Remember I, what I said to do, though. Uh, I know. I'm going to say... No, remember what I said to do. 130. Very good. Yeah, it was 200-something. I watch their channel regularly. Right. But it was 200-something, and there's like 8,000 on watching they Danny Wrench and Hess. They need to get um, Polgar back with um, Kramnik. I get 200 like when I start streaming. Like now that I'm streaming a lot, it's like 800. Nobody wants to watch a oh. Goose of Sun. Damn, that's harsh. I mean, I like him okay. I really loved it when they had Kramnik and Polgar. Why don't I ask chess.com if I can commentate? That's not how it works. They beg me to commentate, and I have Karen I mean, send them a form letter Svid saying, leave that alone. Svidler, I know, is Cease really, and desist. really great, but he doesn't know how to give the floor to anybody else. And he can be, at times, humorless, which I'm not saying, I know he has got a good humor sometimes, but um, he just can't compare to Polkar and Kramnik and some of the other ones. Yeah, he's too dry. He's just not entertaining. You know, I don't really, I don't care for Svidler. Right, they watch more on YouTube than they do on Twitch, which is weird. I mean, you know. But, you, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Svidler's very good, and his commentary is very good, but he just goes on and on and on and on. He doesn't know how to shut up for a minute, let somebody else talk, and have the floor. Should I ban Raj? What did he say? He said, best commentators are Jen and Yasser. <laughs> I thought he said, don't ban me, but he said, don't at me. So should uh, we ban him? <laughs> Let's um, let, let's have Karen opine on that sentence. No, I mean they're okay. I don't watch them though. Yeah. I mean I would watch. Um, I, I think. Of others. I think Gustafson realizes he just can't talk when Svidler does. So he just gave up. Yeah. S S Gustafson, if he's if he's doing commentary on his own or with a weaker player, Gustafson talks nonstop. Uh, yeah, I when can he see when that. he does it with yeah. Svidler, he just sits there no, and he, Svidler, he doesn't even see mad. He's just like, yes, yeah, Svidler's Svidler talk. will not. I'm not and, talk. and you know why? Because mm -hmm. Svidler probably is right, but mm -hmm. that he doesn't understand that there's more to being right. You got it. There's got to be personalities, and he just doesn't shut up. Five hundred centages from the traveling chef seventy eight. Yeah, I need to get Polgar on there like every time. But I, I want to point out to you, it, usually if you watch Chess.com commentary on the Chess.com Twitch. What they're saying isn't right. Their analysis is wrong. Their evaluation is wrong. And they should, like, apologize to the players. Like, oh, why did, why did Aronia make that move? I'm like, because that move's better than any move you could ever think of? That's why. I, I mean, this I, is... This is terrible. I mean, just to, as a diff, it's different... It's really terrible. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean right. But, like, for a different... I was just thinking about Hess. Like, the thing mm -hmm. I like about a Hess commentary is even when he's paired with somebody, like... Botez or whoever, somebody that's weaker usually have a stronger one, a weaker one, or even somebody great like Naradisky. He knows how to let the other person talk, and even if they're wrong, if their chest is wrong, he's always got their back. Mm -hmm. He doesn't make them look dumb. He'll kind of add on to it and spin it around so that nobody ever looks dumb. And Hess and Naradisky would be good because Naradisky is really good. So Naradisky would say things that are correct, and Hess would agree, and Hess would say things that are correct. Yeah, they're great together. But, I mean, just, but Hess is good with anybody because he knows how to. You don't even, you know, make somebody feel bad or talk over them because they're wrong. And you can't have, you can't 
you can't have blitz and bullet and have Danny Wrench commentate on two two of the top ten players in the world. <laughs> you can't do that. Because Danny, what's Danny supposed to do? Danny can't sit there for an hour and then give some variation. Danny has to give the variations right away. Everything Danny thinks about the position is wrong, and his calculation is a million times worse than theirs. So you can't you can't have him do commentary. You can't. <laughs> Okay. I mean, Hess is okay. He's not at their level. And what's funny was, it's amazing like how wrong they are when they say stuff. It's just yeah. like, I'm like, all right. But anyway, the point is, when, when Svidler was doing commentary with Gustafsson, at one point, one of them said, like Svidler's like, you know, we're being critical of these mistakes, but this is fantastic and nobody's better than these two guys. Like this is the highest level bullet. Now pay attention. Imagine you at home are playing bullet. You, you're playing a one minute game. You, okay? Now analyze it with an engine, okay? You wouldn't do that because you have to go see a psychiatrist. And the time's like, what's the problem? And you're like, I, every move I make is a mistake, right? You're rated 1800 and you play a one minute game. What's the level of those games? No. Okay, if you're 1800 on chess.com, and you're playing me one minute, and I'm spotting you a queen, I'm the favorite. Okay, and I'm no good. Like if Nakamura spots me a queen, he's probably the favorite. So the point is, in one minute chess, you can't possibly play any good moves. Nobody can. And those guys play really good moves. I mean, those moves are great. They play like night, they play in the 90s when they're playing one minute chess. Those guys play better in one minute than you guys play with like when you play one day a move. They, they do. This game, this game right here that we just looked at, this would be a very poor game, very poor, if it was uh, Aronian and uh, Napomniachi. This would be terrible. Like White made like six bad moves in a row. And this is this is one day a move, right? So Hess and Danny should be saying, wow, these are the greatest players in the world. This is really high level chess. And instead, Danny goes, ooh, or something. And then Geary got him good on Twitter. I, I kind of like wrench, but go no, ahead. no. But Geary got him good. Like usually, Danny makes this weird noise when yeah. something happens that's like hanging mate one. <laughs> and, and and Geary said, "I, I got to give it to Danny. He's upped his repertoire. He now has this other noise that he makes, not this other same noise he keeps making." Yeah. I think he's entertaining. But by the way, they correctly pointed out when Napomniachi blundered mate and one against Aronian, and Aronian didn't play it. Mm -hmm. They went like Hessen, you know, like Danny's like jumping up and down. As I was watching it. If you watch the other and... channel, they're like, well, obviously he just pre-moved. So he didn't play the mate in one because they both have a second left. Oh. So they're, they're both pre-moving. So they're not going to play mate in one. They didn't pre-move the mate in one. They didn't think their opponent was going to hang mate in one. So. Uh, 300 cent to do's. Mm -hmm. Right. And so forth. Mm -hmm. Roasting Danny so well. I've never played Ivanchuk. By the way, th this is serious. If you if and this happened, if Danny Wrench played one minute with those guys, I mean he would. Adoption isn't the right word. What's what's the what's what's it mean when you lose a hundred in a row? Like not ten in a row, a hundred in a row. D Danny would lose a hundred zero if he played either one of those players one minute. Either one of those guys. I've never been so mad. Abortion, exactly. Vampire chickens ring with 145. Yay. That's a lot. Yay, vampire chicken. Yeah, yeah they would have done. If I played I Am Levy, how old am I? Karen doesn't know who you're talking about. What? Oh, I thought you meant, I thought you meant David Levy from the 70s. You mean... Uh, you Gotham mean, Chess. Oh, you mean Gotham Chess. No, no, I never played him in a real game, no. <laughs> I thought you meant David Levy. <laughs> What's Levy's name? Rosman. Oh, yeah, I thought Levy was his last name. I don't know. <laughs> Eugene God. Levy. But isn't Eugene Levy the uh, the guy on uh, what's that show you watch? Oh, he's the actor. What's that um, show? Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek. Yeah, Eugene Levy. Yeah, yeah he's the best Levy. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, that. I thought yeah. you meant David Levy. Yeah, Levy Rosman's not like a chess player, so I don't you know. I was thinking of real chess players. Getting confused. Mm -hmm. All right. Yay! We have a thousand viewers. Go SCTV mm -hmm. is correct. We have guests. No, Frosty Balrog. Boo, boo. Terrible. You're, you're not on chess TV, though, are you? No. Oh. No, I just got a big raid from Vampire Chicken. 140-something. Yeah. Still is... I, I still wonder if he's a vegan vampire chicken. Uh -huh. 
Mm. All right. Well, it's that time. I drove my Chevy into I Am Levy, and then I Am Levy died. Go to my karaoke. Yeah. There, I'll tickle you when you leave. Mm -hmm. No, don't tickle. Come on. What? Tickle. Well, you didn't leave yet, so I could tickle. <laughs> yeah. Are subs vegan? Usually. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. Did Vampire Chicken even say hey, or did he rave Go shrines. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This guy. How come this guy wasn't banned yet? I don't understand. Well, what did he say? He was making fun of what I said. Oh. Yeah. I, I insulted Levy because he's not a chess player. And then they're like, what do you mean he's not a chess player? What's wrong with you? So I had to ban him. Yeah. Classic raid and run. Highly regarded among us. <laughs> Maybe. He could be. And yeah. He's a chess player. Now, come on. No. Nah. What will I be doing at karaoke? No vegan. Traveling chef? S singing? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe mm. he means what am I singing? I'm going to start out with singing... Um, I'll get another game up while you're talking yeah, yeah. to them. And then yeah. I'll leave. Uh, Tom Petty's Breakdown is the first thing I'm going to sing. Let's see. I'm not really sure what else. I think I might sing some Beatles. I also was singing this um, Smashing Pumpkins song. Bullet with Butterfly Wings. The world is a vampire. Or is it Butterfly? <laughs> yeah. I think I have the title. <laughs> I generally don't like the Smashing Pumpkins. I think they're kind of pretentious. But I like that song. Did you see the Simpsons episode with Smashing Pumpkins? No. I don't it had Smashing Pumpkins, Sonic Youth, and Peter Frampton. And before you leave, I got to tell you something funny That's about that. That's weird. Okay. Right. They were, Well, yeah. But I got to tell you something funny about that. Uh -huh. um, okay. So... They're having a music festival, and they also have um, Cypress Hill is also in the music festival. Mm -hmm. Now, when the music festival mm -hmm. starts, before they do any music, they have an opening act. It's Homer. And Homer has a cannonball shot into his stomach, and then he's like, he's okay. That's the act. Mm -hmm. so, they, so they did it. Okay. So they do it se several times. Then they get to the next venue, and they shoot the cannonball. And he says, he says, yay, hey, everybody. He says... Remember, don't trust anyone over 30. And now, Peter Frampton. <laughs> Peter Frampton's mad the whole episode because he's like, who is in my cooler? Sonic Youth stole my food. <laughs> so he's just furious. All right. Uh, I did that. I was white and I am 1900 against the 1950. I wonder what their actual ratings are. 1900, 1950. And his name is LSI. Mm -hmm. Right. And actually, what's funny is a few years ago, when this guy was a big drug user, his name was different. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was white. I see this defense off and don't know how to counter. He did win, though. He said he played nicely. All right. Now, where are the Gotham chess backers that I can ban? Where are they? No, nobody else wants to back them up. I you know? watch his channel some. Boo. Yeah, Cypress Hill, they stole his orchestra. That's, That's right. That's a pretty good channel. Yeah. I wish he were a little bit less negative. Who ordered the London Symphony Orchestra? Possibly while well, high. I'm looking in your direction, Cypress Hill. Did we order the London Symphony Orchestra? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Gotta watch the episode. Uh. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. You sound like Mary Steenburgen. I've worked with her, and you are identical. Yeah, really? I agree you look like Mary Steenburgen. Yeah. Been, yeah, Ben has told me that before. Look and sound. Yeah, mm -hmm. you sound like her a little too. Huh. You also look like that other woman, but you're better looking than her. You know, the other one. Uh, she was in Being John Malkovich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was also on the, on Seinfeld. She was his girlfriend when I Oh, yeah, I can't ever remember her name. Right, what's her name? Somebody in the chat, tell us. Mm -hmm. Gotham Chess Boo is correct. Catherine Keener. Yeah, you look like Catherine Keener and Mary Steenburgen, like mixed into mm, one. Well, but he you. says you sound like Mary Steenburgen. Mm. You definitely don't sound like Catherine Keener. You don't sound like her. Yeah, oh, nine. I've sung Landslide many times. Oh, I yeah, also Patti Smith. I sing a lot of Stevie Nicks and mm -hmm. Amy Winehouse. But I like to mix it up. Mm -hmm. So, Well, it sounds like you're ready for your next uh, mm -hmm. chess game. Yeah, you've been here almost an hour. That's crazy. You said yeah. you were going to be here for 30 minutes. Oh, and, and karaoke started already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what am I drinking? 
what a noob. I'm always drinking Perrier. That's why you get mm-hmm. Perrier if you're a, if you're a, you know, a member or something. All yeah. right. Well, I'm headed out. Something. They did start karaoke without Probably me. Probably they didn't. They're waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm only going to stream another hour, then I'll come hang out. To a karaoke? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So tell your boyfriend he's got about 30 more minutes to get <laughs> out of there. Yeah. Unless, right. unless your boyfriend is Rhett, then I guess he can stay. <laughs> <laughs> and then some. Yeah. Now, now seriously, Spencer, you can opine. Who, who weighs more? Red or Ron? Um, I think Red does. Red, <laughs> Ron's lost some weight. Well, Ron lost weight. I talked to Ron. Yeah, he see, yeah. He, he said I lost weight. He's definitely. And I was lost like, weight. dude, get your glasses checked. No, he's definitely lost weight. Yeah, no, he did for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Ron. Yeah, I mean, Red. Red. Red is. Um, yeah. Very big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Concerning. I don't know who sings worse. That guy that you know, I guess his name's John, and you said he sings better than the guy who went to Florida. Everybody sings better than Brian. John was good. I don't remember which one is John. Yeah, you said this guy's bad, but he's better than Brian. That's how you described him to me. Um, it was uh, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I yeah. don't remember it was yeah, John. Yeah, I can't remember Brian because he wasn't good. Yeah, you've OHS. Sorry about you two, but, you know, it's fun to do some live streaming. So, hello. Yeah, if you come, maybe we should sing something together. Who, me? Yeah. I can't because of COVID. Oh, yeah, you have to take your mask off. Boo. I don't have to. Well. Show them. <laughs> My goal is to go to karaoke and get up there and say, hey, all you redneck, hick, white supremacist, Trump voters, this is for you, and then sing. No, don't do that. That's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, you the can't do the that. black guys would be confused, but they would agree. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, all right. No, because, I mean... Yeah. I'm friends with, you know, everybody there. They would be like, yeah, that's us. You know, what are you going to do? And a lot of them, you know, are Trump people. Right. And they're also, the other stuff I said. They don't bother me. I know. I don't want to hear about him, but give a shit who they like. It is fun getting beat up in the parking lot. I saw rounders. Wait, that wasn't fun. Yeah. Confusing the audience. Actually, I could watch Gotham play chess. Yeah. Now, I played Gotham like one series of games once about two years ago, and he beat me like 11 1 or 12 1. Yeah, it was terrible. What's, I think we'll play mainly one minute. What song would I sing? The Hillbillies? Hmm. That's right. Okay. Sometimes they sing country music there. I sing it sometimes. It's funny, one guy. I think Joe. Okay, Lee. so you know this song from Ario Speedwagon? Heard it from a friend? Mm-hmm, okay. Yeah. So. When you think Ario Speedwagon, when you think that, you don't think, wow, that guy's a great singer. That's not what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. You're, not, you're thinking something else. However, if you went to that karaoke when we went and you heard that guy mm-hmm. sing, then you would think, wow, that Ario guy's a really good singer. Because the guy who was singing it, oh. Yeah, I like Friends in Low Places. Oh, I like terrible, country music. Terrible. I sing um, Patsy, Patsy. They do have Run. both kinds, country and western. What <laughs> movie is that from? Um, I don't know, Tombstone? The Blues Brothers. Oh. Shit. Blues Brothers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to sing Get Back tonight, too. Man, because if I was the president, I would, the, my first executive order, my first two, uh, ban country music, mm-hmm. and then I would ban all the television shows in the morning where they sit around and talk about nonsense. Those are banned. You know what I'm talking about? Like The View, those kind of shows. Mm-hmm. What is that weird soliloquy there? Wow. Smile juice. You, you, you can't read it because it'll be something disgusting at some point. You can never read those out loud. It was banned. It was already banned by somebody. <laughs> no, but you, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Like The View, those kind of shows. Yeah, what about them? I would ban them if I was president. Yeah, those are horrible it. shoes. Right, B- banned. Shows. But um, country music, I like Johnny Cash. He has a lot of good country music. Yeah, but that's more Western. No, Johnny Cash is good, but I would yeah. ban. I'd have to listen to the song first, then ban it. There's different kinds of country music. Johnny Cash doesn't count. Um, oh. all right. <coughs> I mean, I like real, yeah. real country music, not um, Shania Twain. <laughs> all right. Anyway, I'm gonna let you guys do chess. You guys don't want to talk about all this music. Anyway, have fun. Mm-hmm. Um. 
Also, underwear will be worn on the in outside, so we can, we'll check. And anybody under the age of 16 would be 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And the official language would now be Swedish. Okay, for a trillion dollars, what movie was that? Yeah, I like Willie Nelson. Uh, let's say it again. I said underwear will be worn on the outside, oh. and we'll check. And then the official language is Swedish mm -hmm. now. And everybody under the age of 16 is now 16. I don't know. Let's see if anybody gets it. It's funny, your, 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 your answer is almost right. Yeah, bananas. Right. It's a Woody Allen movie. Oh. They, they overthrew the country in Central America. Then the guy made those pronouncements. And Woody Allen's like, he's already gone mad with power. We just, just took over. <laughs> yeah. Those were his pronouncements. Yeah, Bona Ricci, I love Don, Dolly Parton. I sang Jolene. All right, mm -hmm. bye, guys. Have a great stream, rest of the stream. I'll probably get on some while I'm at the bar. Mm -hmm. But you're only going to stream another hour anyway. Yeah. So. At the most. Or, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, let's analyze bye. this game. This game was, this guy said, I don't know what to do against this opening. Then the guy won easily. So is this like a flex? You know, I don't know. Like, yeah, I would have won easier if I knew the opening better. Ah, oh, that's better. Man, look at this Perrier. It's almost empty. No. Did you want another one before I go? Yeah, that was the, yeah. The big hand? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Can you do a match versus GM Canty? I could. I'll donate $50 if Karen says that line. What line? I want $50. Which line? I'll say it. What line are you talking about? <laughs> well hung rook, what are you talking about? I have a snake bite. Share more gingy stories. I don't know what line he wants you to say. Aww. I don't understand what he wants. The, I did the, there's that. a scene. There's, there's a scene where they're teaching people what to do for a snake bite because they're living in the woods yeah. in the Central America, and they're like, if you get bit by a snake, you have to suck out the poison, right? Mm -hmm. Then the next scene, there's a woman running, right? Pretty attractive woman, and she says, "I've been bitten by a snake," and she's holding her breast, and she's running, and like 500 men are chasing her. Because he suck out the poison. Uh, Gingy wins. Suck out the poison. Right. Bye. Ken West said suck out the poison. He knows. Yeah. All right. So this game, both players are 1,900 or so they claimed. White won the game, but he was like, man, I don't know what to do against the Benko Gambit. Okay, he played E3. That's a very unusual move. It's not a bad move, just unusual. White play, black played b4. It's not what I would play. Okay, then a5 seems like a strange move. So it's you can't take with a pawn, right? I, no. I, uh, mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. I'm partial to Jules Verne. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know. See ya. Okay. A5 is a strange move because you can't you can't take with a pawn. So. All right, this seems good for white. G6 is good. Queen A4. Wow. These must be Lee chess ratings. Queen A4? If, if, if I was white in this position, it was my move, I would, I would play Queen D1. Queen A4? He's walking into Knight C5 later. He's walking into Knight C5. Whoa. All right, Bishop G7 is good. I don't understand Queen A4. Wow. Okay, now black's just winning. All right, this is just winning for black. Good, good. Uh, I mean, white just can't move here. This is the greatest night ever, and you just lost two tempi letting him play it. All right, so the engine says bishop g4 is winning. b3, it's not a good move. It lets white play knight c3 later. Yeah, that's a very poor move. I mean, these pawns are great. The knight can't move anywhere. The bishop is stuck. The, it's going to be a pass pawn later. The knight could go to b3 later if it's allowed. So white has to watch that. And he plays b3, which gives away everything. Yeah, now the knight on c3 is pretty good. All right, now we're back to equality. Okay, and, and, and this is something that we talk about on the stream a lot. And I, I tell Karen a lot, and she's like, yeah, yeah, I know that. And then 
she plays like she doesn't know it. When it's a very hard habit to break, okay? And um, I told Peter Cetera, and he was like, oh, really, Ben? That's interesting. And then there was some hit song. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, I mean, I was in Chicago. So when your opponent makes a move, it's not necessary to stare at the move and then do, do something to that move. So after e5, for reasons I don't understand, even though I explain them, low-rated players are compelled to take that. Like their knight's attacked, they can't move their knight. They have to take that, okay? And it could be the taking it's right. It could be taking it's wrong, but all low-rated players just take it. The engine says e4, this is a terrible move, and after a knight here, black has a big advantage. Black's going to dominate the e5 square. Well, he's not going to dominate the e5 square after takes, knight takes, then white dominates the e5 square. So knight g4, the engine actually says black has a winning position, like 1.5. After here, black is slightly better, but this is obviously better for white than if the pawn was on e5, because then black would, would take on e5 later or put a knight there or a bishop or a pawn. And now white's just totally dominating here. So now the position's about equal. But if you just play here, no matter what white does in the future, eventually black's going to dominate the e5 square. So you have basically a choice of two moves. This move doesn't is just not good. And low-rated players have to play that move. They, they can't play here. There's some psychology like if the guy attacks your piece and you move it away like they won. It's like if I win the election and you lose the election and you're like, I won the election, then it looks bad for you. So you just have to do anything but say you lost the election. Anything, right? I'll just fire the whole Pentagon. Then they'll be like, wow, he fired the Pentagon. And then you forgot he lost the election. You're like, oh, I forgot about that, right? It was funny how all the television networks and cable channels forgot that COVID existed on you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. COVID didn't exist anymore. And then on Thursday, they're like, hey, maybe COVID exists. And more people died on those days and got it than any other day. Just everybody's an idiot. So. Okay, so after E5, you, you, you don't have to take on E5. And when I watch people play and there's like a possibility of a trade or a capture, if the players are low rated, it's 100% they're going to do it. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. When it is good, that's good because you like accidentally played a good move. But anyway, a high rated player would just go here and then dom and, and a really high rated player wouldn't play E5 because after knight G4, they wouldn't like their position. Yeah, I was just thinking I would definitely play h3 here, and that's the engine move. Play h3, you stop knight g4, you stop bishop g4, and your king has the h2 square. This is a building move. Those are the moves super GMs play, and you guys furrow your brow in a vain attempt to understand the situation. And then when you paraphrase me in the chat, you say brown instead of brow, because you don't know what a brow is. <sighs> Terrible. $100,000 cars, everybody's got them. Brow like beer? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so E5 is bad, and you should feel bad. Taking is bad. Knight takes is good. Okay, E6 is an interesting move. Sort of forces there. Okay, white played bishop F1. That sort of gives away who won the game. White played bishop F1. Bishop F1 is an excellent move. Bishop's great on f1. It unleashes the latent potential of the queen. Okay, bishop f5 looks legal. Queen e3 is a weird move. Yeah, knight c6 makes sense. The engine doesn't like bishop f5 because knight c6 attacks the queen and knight e7 check and so forth. So after here, white has an advantage. Nice passed pawn. Queen e3 is a weird move. It's just like I'm attacking a knight. Look at me. Ratings seem like they're leech has ratings. Okay, and again, again, it just, it just proves my point again. So black played knight d7. If you're white, you don't want to trade these knights. The knights, as Dvoretsky would say, are superfluous. They're tripping over each other. Okay, now if you watch Archer, the, the cartoon, you wouldn't say they're tripping over each other. You would say they're tripping balls, okay, which is also true. 
Okay, especially if, if you're kidnapping the Pope. Knight c6 is the correct move. Attacking the queen, gaining a tempo, knight e7 check later, and the knights are terrible. Though the guy played knight d7, so he had to do it. So I gotta take it. He played knight d7. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Nobody's making like laughing at my at my tripping balls joke. Jesus. Terrible chat, terrible. Frankly. Alright, well watch more Archer, I guess. Okay, knight takes. Whoa. I'm the world's worst person. That's saying something, because you know Trump's still alive. Okay, rook takes a4. Good. Take good. Good. Queen a5, good. Knight c3, good. Every move, good. No complaints. Knight f6 blocking the bishop on g7? I mean, I wouldn't do that. Rook e8, which is just... I mean, that's just a horrible blunder. Now, if you watch all of my streams and you remember them, you know, which obviously you don't, but it's either one. Approximately three days ago, the same thing happened on my stream. The same thing. I was doing game analysis. It could have been yesterday. It could have been two days ago. It could have been three days ago. I don't know. And black played rook e8. Okay. It was... Okay. And white took the rook and then took whatever was on e8. And then he won like in two moves. Now in that instance, that game, white had to take the rook. Because if his queen moves somewhere else, he was going to lose the rook on e1 which is not the case here. So this is not as bad a blunder, but it's a very bad blunder. It's very bad. It's not as bad as the other one. Here, white could play queen d2. In the other, the one that was shown a few days ago, white had to take the rook because there was no other move. And that move just won instantly. So that made rook e8 sort of bad. And the guy was watching the game who was white, and he said, my opponent played rook e8 immediately. And then the guy took the rook and they won. And this is similar because rook e8 is such a bad move. And I'm always suspicious when, you know, the guy says, these were our ratings. And I'm like, you don't play like these are our ratings. Rook e8 is just a ridiculous blunder, okay? So with almost no analysis, take, 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 only legal move is here, okay? Obviously, bishop h6 wins. So if you're a grandmaster or even an IM, if those people exist, Okay, not FM, but you would see that in like a second. Like take, 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 bishop h6 resigns. Then you would just do something else because that's absurd. And supposedly these guys are 1900 and black just like walks into checkmate losing all his pieces. Okay, man, that bishop on f1 is good. Otherwise, queen here, checkmate. Okay, so rookie, it is, and again, I've said this on stream many times. You guys are very interested in complicated positional and strategical ideas which make the game do this. Like, I'm better, than he's better, than I'm better, than he's better. And if it was Magnus Carlsen playing Fabiana Caruana, that would matter. If, like, you know, Carlsen's better because of a strategical mistake, then he might just win the game. For you guys, it doesn't matter. But that's all you guys are concerned with is... I have this set of books and it says this pawn's isolated and weak. I don't understand why. And I don't understand why my bishop is considered bad. The fact that you don't understand that doesn't matter. Your rating's not going to change because of it and your results aren't going to change. However, chess books and chess coaches, that's all they talk about. Like, oh, don't you understand this? Don't you understand that? It doesn't matter if you understand that, okay? What you have to understand is rookie eight, loses all of Black's pieces and gets checkmated. You can't make moves where you get checkmated and your opponent's moves are like, check, check, checkmate. If your opponent plays the most brilliant move of all time that you would never see, that's fine. But if your opponent takes all your pieces with check and then plays bishop h6 and you resign, you can't do that. That's what you can never do. What happens is, and I, again, we've talked about this on stream before, People who are rated 1,500 to 2,000, when they have white in this position, they play queen takes rook, they play rook takes knight, they play bishop h6, and they win. 
Then they show their coach and their coach goes, yay, you're great. Give me more money. I'm a great coach. That's what, that's what they do. However, the same, the same deviled egg, the same 1,500 to 2,000, when they have black in this position, they play rookie eight and lose. So when they have a winning tactic, they play it and they allow win the same winning tactic, the same deviled egg. Why? Grandmasters, the reason they're grandmasters is if they make a move like rookie eight, they're trying to find what their opponent's going to do that could crush them. Then if their opponent can crush them, they don't play rookie eight. What we do is we're safe. We make a move and we're like, okay, can the guy hurt us? And you guys aren't like that. You guys are like, I attacked his queen. Look at me. Oh, queen takes rook. I missed that. Nobody would see that. You would see it if you were white. And this is the biggest mistake of lower rated players is when they have winning moves, they make them, which is good. And they allow the same winning moves for their opponent. And obviously, if you're going to allow winning moves, which means you lose, the reason should be it was too hard for you. Oh man, I didn't see that. That was great. I would never see that. Not, oh, I would see that if I was white. I'll never see it when I'm black. Okay, and people just defend really badly. People don't defend well. So in this position, white doesn't have a threat. White's not threatening mate. White could never mate black. Look at this. Every mother, son, every piece is near black's king. That's the safest king I've ever seen. And in one move, he gets checkmated. Okay, now, if you're going to hang mate and hang your queen and hang mate in two, you're not going to beat anybody. It doesn't matter if you understand past pawn, weak pawn. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how strong you are strategically when you hang mate in one every game. That doesn't make any difference. Now, one of the reasons I never lose in slow chess to weak players is not because I play better than them. Often, I don't play better than them. Often, they're like, why is that guy a grandmaster? We need to make an emote showing that he probably shouldn't be a grandmaster. We need to do something because that guy's playing bad. Yeah, the engine says he's playing 40. It's like, what are we going to do about that? However, my bad moves do not hang mate in one or mate in two or a queen or a rook. Now, in blitz chess, they do, but not in slow chess. So in slow chess, where I have an hour on the clock and you have an hour on the clock or more, I never lose. And the reason is not because I play better than you. That's not why. It's because I never blunder and you always blunder. So that means I move 10, it could be equal. I move 20, it could be equal. I move 30, it could be equal. And I move 40, you hang a queen. Then you're like, man, I was drawing that GM. And then I hear that every game. And you can't do that. You can't play rookie eight. You can't do that ever. You can play all the bad moves you want and the players proved that this game. They both made a lot of bad moves. Okay, but they didn't make a move that hung mate and won. So the game's still going. And you could never do that, never. Now, I'll make an analogous situation so you understand better. Imagine you're playing poker and you're playing no limit and you're playing high stakes. Now, obviously you're imagining because none of you are doing that except unless Dominic is watching. Then okay, Dominic's not imagining. He's just thinking about the last time he did it. If you played well and you made no errors that you saw, even if you made an error, other top players say, no, nah, that's not an error. That's fine. Okay, arguable error. And then one hand, you play quite badly and you misunderstand what's happening and you lose all your chips. It could be you were unlucky. It could be that anybody would have lost all their chips. But it could be you just gave away all your chips Mike Madison style. Okay? It could be you're like, oh, man, I gave all my chips away. I'm an idiot. Right? Like you think you're winning when you have a 0% chance of winning. Because you're, you know, are you kidding me? You got two red aces and the board is, you know, four clubs with a straight draw. You know, five, six, seven, eight, nine of clubs and the two of diamonds, and you have two red aces. And the guy goes all in, and you call. If the guy didn't look at his cards, he's still probably beating you. Not even looking at his cards, he's, he has a good chance to beat you, okay? And you're like, oh, I got unlucky. Okay, so this can happen in chess. 
is like you play fine, you play the same level as your opponent, it's not clear who's gonna win, like this position the engine says is equal. Then you play rookie and the game's over. Okay, and you can't do that. You can never do that. If you never do that, you won't lose. Now, I've lived in Georgia for four or five years, I don't know, some amount of time, and I've played slow tournaments, game in 30 or slower. So game 30, game 45, game 60, game 90, whatever. Okay, and in all the games I've played in Georgia, in the state of Georgia, I've probably played, I don't know, 200 games in the last five years, something like that. Okay, I lost one. Who did I lose to? Why? I was black against Komsky in the last round of a tournament. And uh, I was uh, equal, then I was worse, then I was clearly worse, and then I was lost, and then I lost. I just got outplayed the whole game. And I also had no time on my clock. I mean, I totally outclassed. I was outclassed. And that was the only game I lost. That was it. And I've played Grandmaster Zapata. I've played Deepak Aaron. I've played Ben Moon. These are the best players in Georgia. I've played other masters, uh, experts, A players. I don't lose to them because I don't blunder like rookie eight. That's ridiculous. Okay, I didn't blunder against Komsky. I just got totally outclassed. So I lost. Okay, so I would never play rookie eight because that's ridiculous. And then if I was white, I would do that. And if I was playing a low rated player, they would also do that. And then here I can't escape. I've been losing to low rated players, but not this losing. That's, that's different. And you have to not do that. Okay, and then black resigned. The engine plays this, and then it plays this, and that, that's the engine moves. Staving off mate as long as possible. All right. So this game just ended like in the blink of an eye. It was like, this game's unclear. I don't know who's going to win. And then black just hung mate. And it's, it's, you can't do that. And I can't stress that enough. And to, to teach you further, every time you make a move in chess, the only thing you're worried about for your level are checks and captures. This is the only move that is a check and a capture. And having said that, and me being unbelievable right now, I can't even believe this is true. That's the only move that's a check or a capture, which is weird. Really? Wow. So the only move that's a check or a capture happens to be both. If you're black, that's the move you have to analyze. That's the only move you have to analyze. So if you say, I didn't see that, and I was your chess coach, I would retort with, that's the only move you should have analyzed. You shouldn't have analyzed any other move. And your answer would be, well, I didn't look at that. Well, that's why you lost. This is the only check, it's the only capture. This is the only check, this is the only capture. And here, you should be very scared if you have the black pieces. You should be scared of getting mated and you should be scared of this pawn queening. Okay, the pawn's not queening. So now you gotta be scared of getting mated. And this is the only move you have to see. And then you're like, oh, okay, never mind. And probably there's other moves that win. The engine says knight e4 wins, it says bishop d2 wins, but okay, this is just mate. All right, terrible. Didn't see h6, boo, boo. The point is, these players are rated 1900, right? Because it says so. And it can't see mate, Blund make horrible blunder. And yet, according to Reddit, that three years they're GMs. It just takes three years, maybe four years. Yeah, when you checkmate your opponent. Right. Right, I've played Komsky a few times. The first time we played... He outclassed me in the world in the world open like in the 90s, 94, 93, 93, I think. He just outclassed me and beat me in like 80 moves. Like he was equal, then slightly better, then clearly better, and then winning. And the game was like five hours and 80 moves. I just I got nothing I could do. And then I played him again in Kings Island about 15 years ago. And very complicated game and ended in a draw. Very complicated. I was black in, that, in all three games against him. Then I lost to him like three or four years ago in Atlanta. Yeah. Right, in poker you're trying to make good decisions. However, some decisions can cost you everything. Some of your bad decisions don't matter as much. It's like in chess. 
but some of your bad decisions in poker that you're, you're done. Now, let me explain what poker people do wrong and then I'll get back to the stream. A Makiri, subscribe. I'm sorry I pronounced your name wrong. Let's hope for a huge donation. $5, that's, that's huge. Okay, somebody else I think did something and I missed it. So let me look. I heard some noises. Uh, give me a second. Uh, you subscribe. I guess I didn't miss anything. Got raided. Your car has been towed. It's in a cube. Okay, so let me look. Well, I was giving you a poker analogy. Um, yeah. Here's what every poker player does. I'm shaking my head derisively in their direction. Last hand of the session in a money game, the poker player does something insane, right? Insane. They lose all their money in that hand. They got no more money left, so they leave. And the people that they talk to about the session, when they're like, how did you do? They say, oh, it was a terrible session. About halfway through, my aces lost to queens, and they shake their head. They had aces, their opponent had queens, and they lost the hand. And so they're like, that's why I lost all my money, because of the hand from four hours ago, when after the hand, I was still ahead. That's what they do. They find one hand out of a thousand they were unlucky and blame their whole session on that hand, not on the hand where they played like an idiot. They all, they all do that. All of them. They all do it. It's terrible. Resulting, yeah. When they win, which they don't, when poker players, I mean bad poker players, sometimes they win because they do something idiotic, but they win, right? They, they, they're all in on the turn and they have a one outer and they hit their one outer and they go home and they're like, yeah, I won. Those guys are good for poker though. I appreciate, I, I approve of those guys. Those guys are great. Yeah. Uh, nothing can beat two aces. Nothing. All right, we'll do one more game and maybe like two more rants. Uh, the ending was quite nice. The ending was quite nice. I agree. It wasn't shallow or pedantic. Uh, this is a game Petrosian played in 56. Okay, that's not, that's not what we're doing here. All right. Delete, delete, delete. This is one of the best games I ever played accuracy-wise. A 1,200 versus a 1,300 on chess.com. So that's their actual ratings. Okay, white's 1,283 and black is 1,368. And it's a 15-minute game if I can do math. No, it's not. It's a 30-minute game. Wait, I changed my mind again. Yeah, it is a 30-minute game. Well, I'm getting confused. I used to be able to do math in my head. Now I, I can't do anything against, for anybody. Invalid PGN. No. What's wrong with the PGN? You know what? I think at the beginning of his PGN, there's a bracket missing. I think this bracket's missing. Although I don't know if that's going to matter. Whoa, what happened? Is that going to fix his PGM putting that bracket there? Probably not. It did. Wow. I'm the greatest genius in my chair. <clears throat> okay, so the guy with white was very proud of his play. Um, okay, it is a 30-minute game. Man, I don't know why I'm so confused. Uh, Polk, lo Polk lost? I can't imagine Polk losing a session to Negranu. Jesus Christ. I lost a lot of respect for Negranu watching him play heads up. Jesus Christ. I mean, Schifoni said he was really good. He played with him once, and he says he always knows what cards are in your hand. Seems weird he'd lose all the time knowing every card in your hand. But all right. Maybe too much drugs or something. I don't know. Wow. I can't, be I can't believe, you know, something. Yeah. He's only 1,300. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I'm talking about Negranu playing poker, not chess. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe Polk has to let Negreanu win a session or two to keep him on the hook. I don't know. Let's see. You like when Daniel guesses the cards right? I wish he could win. Man. All right. I mean, he's a vegan. He plays chess. It's a guy that I should like. You know? His theory and practice are the same in theory. Okay, so White was really proud of his game. He said, I played great. This is a 30-minute game. This will be the last game of the our stream. It's a Steinitz defense, sort of passive for black. D3 sort of passive. Okay. Two bishops, what else? All right, just an equal sort of boring game. Not very exciting. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. All right, so black's better. Black has the two bishops. Black can advance on the king's side with all these extra pawns here. All right, so far so good. Okay, so it's clearly wrong to take this and you know, undouble white's pawns and get rid of your pawn majority on the king's side. That's quite a poor move. And I mean, <clears throat> I basically say the same thing the whole stream, right? White played here and black stared at that pawn, had to do something about it. Okay, so EE4 -E is the right move. Then white has four to three on the king's side and white can play F, I'm sorry, black has four to three on the king's side, black can advance his king's side pawns, White has two sets of double pawns here. His, his pawn structure is more shallow and pedantic. So yeah, after e4, black is just better. Yeah, now, probably white's better because white just has more space now. Yeah, this is a terrible, you know. This, this makes the game more simple, but white doesn't have these double pawns anymore. Black doesn't have this potential pawn storm with all these extra pawns and his two bishops. So now, now white's fine. Okay. Rook e1, bishop g4, very reasonable play. Put it in h. Okay, that's legal. It's not a good move. And then after you're here, he didn't, he played g takes f3, wow. So, I mean, I would definitely take black here, but the engine says it's equal. All right, fine. But queen f6 is ridiculous, okay. So, so far, the game's okay. It, players are obviously lower rated you know not the highest level game but queen f6 is going beyond not playing high level yeah i mean just because white has a terrible pawn structure doesn't mean black has to have one too um so yeah just not playing queen f6 and black is slightly better now black's just worse because white has the only open file and we have a backward pawn here which farnsley can explain to you yeah i mean white's just better now this rook's on this this rook's on this. And the fact that white's pawn structure is terrible, black has the same bad pawn structure. Okay, now here black just made a terrible, terrible, terrible blunder. Uh, this rook's defending this pawn. So if you want to defend this pawn, which you do, you should play rook here or rook here. Personally, I would play rook here. But the engine says this is also a move. He played the other rook hanging his A pawn. <clears throat> And I think once Black saw this, as I've said on this stream many times, he forgot about anything else that's going on in the position and just hung his A pawn because that wasn't the C pawn, so he just forgot about that. Okay, now White's clearly winning because this pawn is still really weak. Put it at H. King G8, okay. Interesting move. It would make more sense to play Rook C6 because after here we can move our C pawn. It's more accurate. And he did. Probably c6 is better. Who moved his king up in the endgame? B4, giving white a path. Very nice. Yeah, b4 is a really poor move. Very poor. Yeah, giving white's king a path over there. White could just take the rook and then take on d6 and then take on f6 and c5 and b4. But it doesn't matter. Everything wins now. And then this is a weird move, king f8. After king f8, he probably figures the rook's going to move. And then rook here, like, attacks a pawn that can't be defended. 
So like rook here would make more sense or activating the rook. King here just forces white to make a good move. So that's weird. Okay, and then black resigned. So it wasn't a great game, but white played okay. I wouldn't complain about white's play too much. Um, black made a lot of errors. Uh, queen f6 was a weird move. But yeah, I mean, the main, the main culprit obviously is totally forgetting about this a file. So like once white plays a takes b3, this is very advantageous to white, the, the rook on the a pawn, the rook defending the a pawn. And it shouldn't really matter because it's ne nobody's ever going to win that pawn. And then after a million moves, black just forgot about it and played rook ac8. Just incredible blunder. I mean, because the rook is defending the a pawn. So you can't, it's worse than just losing the a pawn. Now the rook infiltrates and sends all these pawns. It makes the b5 pawn weak. So very poor move, rook ac8. I've never been so mad. Go Ken West. The more ads you watch, the more money I get. Although it's not much. Damn. Go Spencer. Any interesting results so far, Spencer? Anything? Gibcat subscribed. All normal? Okay. Um, shallow and pedantic. So here's what happened. It's a long story. They're playing Trivial Pursuit at, on, on Family Guy. And obviously, Peter can't get any questions right. So Lois takes questions from the, the toddler edition Right, like what color is a fire engine? You know, what color is an orange? And Peter doesn't know that. And the dog is like, those aren't the right questions. So Peter wins the Trivial Pursuit game because he's answering questions for three-year-olds. Then when he wins, he becomes very stuffy. Like, I'm smarter than all you guys and so forth. <laughs> Which makes Brian sort of mad. So he's watching some like news show on Sunday and it's a round table discussion and Peter's watching it because Peter thinks he's smart now. And the guy says, he says, yeah, those policies are shallow and pedantic. And then the guy next to him says, I agree, shallow and pedantic. And then Peter says, I agree, shallow and pedantic. Then he's like at the dinner table and he's like, Lois, this food that you're serving is shallow and pedantic. <laughs> eh, go Peter. Trying not to learn, gifted a sub to somebody. Yay. Hooray. Yeah. Uh, Peter sounds like Donnie. That is correct. Family Guy, the, the, the Mafia episode was good that was just on. Yeah. You missed Family Guy from 15 years ago. Uh, truth hurts. Yeah. In Denver, fire trucks are all right. It, when, when Peter's trying to answer, he says... What color are those red fire trucks? One of the questions was like, say what? Like what? And then you're right. And he's like, hmm, I want to say who. <laughs> Peter's the best. <laughs> I want to say who. That's pretty good. All right, I'll do one more game because, you know, there could be more donations. I don't know. It hasn't been two hours yet. All right. Did you ever blah, 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 blah. I think I looked at that game yesterday, no? All right. My opponent are roughly 1,400. What's that, 500? 1,378 versus something. All right, this game seems not the highest level based on me perusing it slowly. Uh... This it says time control blitz. That's what it says. Blitz. Thirteen seventy eight white. Thirteen ninety four black. <laughs> the game report said it was terrible. That's right. Would you have found nineteen bishop takes h three? Uh, I didn't think it worked, but it did. All right. Five hundred cents to do's. Keep on streaming. I'm awesome. All right. And we have a train. Yeah. See, for me, the last few years, the stream seems very divisive. I ban a lot of people. 
kangaroo bans a lot of people. You guys say Trump is great. And then you guys are like, why don't you like Nakamura? And what, why, why, aren't, why aren't you best friends with Gotham Chess? And how come you haven't played a match with Hans Niemann yet? And, you know, how come you don't like my mom? And, you know, how come you don't answer my emails and my texts? By the way, somebody texted me today and they said their name. And they said, hey, Ben. And then they said, look at this. And then I, I don't know who it is. They said their name. I looked up their phone number. I, saw, I looked up their chess.com account. I got nothing. I don't know who it is. So, all right. I don't think the person's ever texted me before. Nine bits. Anyway, I don't like streaming as much as I used to because it seems like it puts everybody in a bad mood, like me. Sorry, you gave 109 cents to dues. We have to delete a lot of the chat. And on YouTube, there's a lot of nasty comments I have to delete. And then you guys, like, here's another thing. Like, look, like, look, for example, look at this. Okay. So already I'm in a bad mood. Like F6, I'll move two. Black's already losing. You know, you see what I'm saying here? Yeah. Actually, maybe the guy with black submitted the game. Yeah. Okay. So I have to flip. Ah, now black played F6. Anyway, the, the stream's usually very frustrating for me. So, because it just seems like everybody's always mad. Especially me. Uh, like 1% in the hype train? Come on. Nine bits. That's good. I like that. Uh, I won my first game of chess today. Good. Good. Never heard of Chess Network. Never heard of a Gadmator. Who else haven't I heard of? You guys are always talking about the same five or six guys. Yeah. No, I can't turn off the comments on YouTube because that would cost us money. People like to comment. I did that once. Yeah, Karen said don't do that. That's more of a trying not to learn suggestion than trying to learn. That was shocking trying to learn said that. Project Nowhere gifted a sub. Trying not to learn gifted a sub. Trying not to learn is gifting subs and trying to learn is telling me to turn off YouTube comments. Did you guys switch bodies or something? What the hell? JAA 92 giving five subs. That's more like it. 100 cents to do is from Sori. Anton Pagushin gifted, wait, how many? Five subs, yay. Aren't they the same guy? They are not the same guy. By the way, you saying that makes trying to learn pretty mad, I would guess. Yeah, I, I would guess that's, that's what would happen. Yeah. 500 cents to do is. All right, trying not to learn is begging me to analyze his game. That usually makes me want to ban people, but I'll, I'll let him live because he's a moderator. Yeah. No, but even here, the comments are terrible. You know, there's just a lot of hate on this stream. And that's why I like Karen's stream. There's like no hate. Karen and Spencer are nice. And Spencer being nice is weird. And then the comment, people are nice. You know. Karen claims... It's not because I'm divisive, which obviously that's why it is. She claims it's because I have a million viewers and she doesn't have too many. Karen thinks if she had 800 viewers every stream, the chat would also be sort of nasty. I don't believe that. Do you guys think if I had 70 viewers and Karen had 800, her chat would be nastier than mine? Ish don't think so. Monorail. Monorail. Yeah. They deserved it. Dreaded buzzkill, 500 cents. Thank you. With 100 viewers, people would be nicer? I don't believe that. I think it's just me. That's right, I do. That's right, KK Detroit. That is correct. But see, also, it's obviously not all my fault. Because look, F, I mean, come on, F6. Come on. All right. My blood pressure is going up because I can see the moves and you guys can't. So I know it's coming. Okay. So basically every move this game is a mistake. So E5 is a mistake, but it's intentional. F6 is a mistake, also intentional. E6, I think, is not an intentional mistake. It's just a mistake. Intentional mistakes I like. I do that all the time. That's fun. Yeah, I like that. Um... Let's see, Spencer, yeah. 310 to dues. Play-Doh 27881. 
D4 was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. E6 is a mistake. Bishop C5 is a mistake. But that's a pretty good mistake. Bishop C5 is barely a mistake. He's just setting himself up later for queen check winning the bishop. It seems like that definitely has to happen. E D7 is a good move. Bishop D7 is fine. Knight F3 is fine. Knight E7 is fine. Okay, now the moves are okay. H3 is ridiculous. It's H3. What? It's like a two. Why would you play H3? Look. When low-rated players hang a piece, I understand that. I was hanging pieces before you were born. Okay? So if you're rated 800, 1200, 1500, and you hang a piece, it was an accident. You didn't mean to hang a piece. Right? If you play H3, that I don't understand. I don't. Because if you had a chess coach, or if you read any books on chess, you would never think of the move H3. You would think, develop my minor pieces, castle, control the center. So how do you come up with moves like H3? That, 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 that I don't get. You guys do that all the time. You guys make random legal moves that no chess coach or book or video would ever talk about. You guys do it on your own. You guys are trying to be creative. You're like, hmm, chess book says I should play in the center, so I'll play on the side. My chess coach says I shouldn't blunder all my pieces, so I'll blunder all my pieces. What's h3? All right. That's a good move. The worst part is white played e6, which is a silly move. White played h3, which is a silly move. White played a3, which is a silly move. And white has a big advantage here because, you know, black played f6 on move two. So mad. Rawr. Okay. A6, of course. Bishop F4, that's the best move. Castles is, is good. E3 is good. Rook E8's legal. Bishop check is good. King H8's the best. Castles is good. Knight G6 is good. Bishop G3 is good. Queen E7's, you know, legal. Bishop B3, I don't understand. Emblem22 subscribed. Why not like develop your knight? Your knight has two squares to go to. Why, why would you go here? What's the reasoning? Rook f8 after playing rook e8. All right. Yay, level five. I've collected all of the emotes. All right. Mike, come on. Yeah. 15 subs, 2,300 bits. Now let's have a Mike Hummer discussion because this discussion relates to you at home. I also know somebody else I could mention, but Mike Hummer won't, won't care if I talk about him. The other person, if they found out, wouldn't be happy with me talking about them. You guys don't know who it is. It's just that the situation's similar. Imagine you're a good junior player. You're rated between 1,500 and 2,000, and you're between the ages of 10 and 16. So you would expect when you're in your 20s, probably you'll get to 2,000 or higher, probably. But then imagine Mike Comer, who was the Missouri junior champion when he was a junior, and his rating was 1,700, 1,750, okay? And this was when he was, you know, 17, 18 years old, now he's 35 years old. Maybe he's older now. Maybe he was 35 when I last thought about it. Maybe he's 40 now. But anyway, and his rating hasn't changed. So Mike Cummers had the same rating for 20 years. So the question, okay, and I know people like that. I don't want to talk about other people. But you would think if you're a talented junior and you're you know, winning junior tournaments, that and you play chess all the time and you direct chess tournaments and you work in a chess club and you do chess online and you go to the park and play chess and you know you see what i'm saying why would you not get better in 20 years from the ages of like 16 to 36 and the reason is i'll tell you why the reason is you're just you're exactly the same so imagine you're five years old and you do math and you're the best in your class 
when the teacher says, what's 10 plus 8? You're like, 18. And the other kids are like, wow, that was fast. I'm only five years old. And then the teacher's like, what's 6 times 3? And the other kids are like, what does times mean? And you're like, 18. And the teacher's like, man, you're the best in my class. But imagine that five-year-old didn't get better at math. They were good at 6 times 3. They were good at 10 plus 8. I guess I like the number 18 for some reason. And then that was it. They never, did nothing, right? A lot of chess players are like that. They, they get to their level and they don't want to learn anything. They think what they know is right. Obviously, if everything you knew was right, you wouldn't be 1700. You'd have to take some things that are wrong and make them right. But my comer's not doing that. And it's weird to play chess all the time, have a, a very high rating when you're a kid, and it just never changes. And that's because of the stubbornness of some people to not improve, to not get better, to not learn from their games. He knows that too. He talks about, I'm going to play good this game. Not my he says that to me, not my usual. I'm going to play good. I'm not going to play the way I usually play. And I'm like, can't good just be the way you usually play? Why do you have to play the way you play? He's like, I have to. That's, that's how I play. I mean, he knows what he does is wrong, but he feels like he has to do it. Right? Imagine if Trump woke up this morning and said, yeah, I should concede and I should help him with the transition and, I, and whatever. I should do something about COVID. Then he's like, yeah, but I don't do that. That's not who I am. I'm Donald Trump, so I got to act like a lunatic. That could happen. That could be happening every day. It's not, but it could be. It could be every day Trump wakes up and he's like, man, I want to be a better person. So I'm going to do something about COVID. I'm going to hook up Joe Biden, get his team going. I'm not going to fire people for no reason. I'm not going to go to the golf course for five hours and cheat. Maybe he wakes up and thinks that. And then he's like, nah, I'm Donald Trump. I'm just going to be a dick again. That's, he could be doing that. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean... You know, he could, he could do that, but he's not. You could get better at chess, but you decide not to. The way to get better at chess is to analyze your games and play slow chess and play better players and try to find the right move. And instead, you guys are like, I'm going to play a woman on the internet 12 hours straight. I'm going to sack my queen every game, and I hope I win one of them. I mean, that's, you know, terrible. I don't think Trump thinks he's a nice guy. I don't think so. Ridiculous. You think I think I'm a nice guy? Exactly. Okay. So, you know, knight takes e5. I'm not a fan of that, but all right. I mean, e4, the knight has the beautiful e4 square. This bishop is blocked by two pawns, and white played e4. I mean, that just helps black. That gives me the d4 square for my knight. That gives my bishop an open diagonal, and it stops you from playing here. I think the main thing, which I sort of glossed over, was it gives d4 to the knight. That's, that's a very poor move. This pawn is great for thwarting these pieces. It's great. These pieces can't do anything. So white's up a pawn here, and the engine says after knight d5, white's just completely winning. Now it says black's better. Man, he went from plus 2.7 to minus 1 because he opened this up, he opened this up, and then queen g5 was played threatening the bishop because of this pin. So king h2, which is okay. Knight d4, of course. Queen e1 is a very strange move, but all right. Yeah, so now bishop h3 wins, and he was asking me if I'd find that move, and the answer is yes. After bishop h3, if you take it, knight check wins the queen. When my opponent makes a really weird move like queen e1, and I, I, the first thing I think of is this. That's the first thing I think of. And then I'm like, oh, the pawn can take it. So does this work? And the answer is yes. Obviously, if you take this way, it works. I'd have to analyze this properly. And after queen check, bishop here, I assume g5 wins. But... The engine says this is forced mate, knight f3, and the engine says this move wins. 
I would assume I'm winning because this is absolutely ridiculous. And these pieces aren't playing. So in a tournament game, it's 100% I would take this. But in a blitz game, I might not see it, but I probably would. Because that idea of, you know, and, and, and Queen E1 is just really, really, really bad. It's, it, it disconnects the rooks. It puts the queen out of the game. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay, rook f6 is also okay. Bishop d5 is a totally irrelevant move. That has nothing to do with anything. What, what kind of move is that? All right, rook h6. He has an idea. And then I, I was right about bishop d5 because he went back. What, what, what's this? What? All right, and then he played here. It's actually better to take with the bishop, but all right. He saw his knight check. And then his opponent resigned, which is n not something I would consider. I would move my king, and I would take the knight, and the game goes on. Yeah, I mean, white, white's completely lost, but I would never consider resigning. Yeah. That was a weird play by white. Queen e1, and then bishop d5 to b3. That's, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, queen's not good on e1. Okay, that was very poor. 200, 100 cents to do is from emblem 22. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then Emperor of Ice Cream gave me a few cents to do's. Thank you. All right. Okay, we have to look at trying not to learn because my other option is to ban him. So that would be my first choice. But then he would be unbanned and then he would complain more. So we'll look at his game instead. Trying not to learn. It sounds like it's raining because it's really noisy. Okay, here's a trying not to learn game. He's the only person who donated and put a game in. And by that, I mean everybody did. So, okay. Uh, trying not to learn is 1731. His opponent is 1655. The time control is... Three minutes. And that I don't have any other information. All right. I've seen Try Not to Learn play, so I assume those are Lee Chess ratings. All right. Uh, exactly. You are the greatest, it's true. Yeah, you can't really argue with that. Okay. Somebody's loudly talking about their game in the chess center. Okay. Usually they won when they're like that. Rawr. You know. If they lost, they're like... Rawr. Okay. Uh, this is a three-minute game. Carol Khan. Bishop C4 already... Uh, what, what are the ratings of these players? 1655. All right, so definitely Lee Chess ratings. Bishop C4 is just a nonsensical move. Well, black's already better. Black should definitely play e5 because you want to play e5 and d5 if you can. But now he can't. All right, so position's equal again. You know what's funny is this is a straight-up queen's gambit declined because white played bishop c4, then bishop e2. So normally white would be a tempo ahead, but he's not. So this is just a, que this is just a queen's gambit declined. There's like a million Grandmaster games in this position. But white, the colors are reversed. Now, you guys won't understand this, but I'll show you anyway. Because some of you will. There's not many. Queen's Gambit, just like the movie, the miniseries, whatever. I haven't seen it, so I don't know what it is. Okay, that's the position that we're looking at right now, but the colors are reversed. And this is a normal position. This position's happened. Okay, and then, bam. That's the same position, but color's reversed. So here, white played a very strange move. Like, c3 would be a normal move. Played knight e5. That seems to just lose material for nothing. But black didn't take it. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure these are leech has readings. So bishop takes bishop, queen takes, knight takes pawn, just wins a pawn. Because the knight is undefending the pawn. So after this, black is just winning. Now, if you play knight takes c6, which you could also play, then we have this very nice way to win. 
Now, bishop takes should win, but this is a very nice way to win. We attack the rook. If the rook goes here, we go here defending the pawn, and the knight's trapped. So, so white's obviously lost here. So bishop takes e2, queen takes e2, knight takes d4, just wins a pawn, center pawn. Knight e5 is a blunder. Then black doesn't take advantage. Okay, and I'd still rather have black, I guess. The engine says it's equal. That just hangs the e pawn. So that's terrible. And black took it. Yeah, good job. <clears throat> Bishop takes a7 looks totally crazy. The engine says it's okay. It's losing, but it's not as bad as I thought it was. So we should take the bishop. Queen takes. Bishop f6. And black just has a big advantage. Because black has this tremendous pressure against white's queen side. Okay, now position is about equal again. Threatening mate. He saw it. Shocking. Giving up his bishop. Is this a pawn just hanging every move and nobody's taking it? So rook there just hangs the a pawn. It's funny. It's similar to that game we just looked at where black played rook a c8 and just hung his a6 pawn. Now white plays rook a1 d1 hanging his a pawn. It's weird to hang this pawn. Like, why would you? Well, that's strange. Well, black's just winning. Just winning. All right. This is probably a win, but some drawing chances. Black should have tried to keep more pawns. The more pawns you trade, the more it is closer to a draw. G4? Wow. Wow. Normally, you would play h5 in this position and try to advance your pawns on the king side. But white advanced his pawns. Yeah, interesting. I don't agree with trading rooks. Since this is on this diagonal, and that's the bishop I have, you want to put your rooks on the seventh rank or put one on the seventh rank and one on the f file, and then try to transfer your bishop to this diagonal to attack this pawn. If you trade rooks, there's less attacking chances against the f2 pawn. So rook f4 makes sense. Rook c2 makes sense. Trading rooks isn't, isn't helping black win. Rook c 8s a weird move because you play rook c2 instead. Yeah, and this is probably a draw now would be my guess. Yeah, this should be a draw now. Don't understand knight h2. f4 is just insane. Yeah, that's a terrible move. So... White was very interested in trading all the pawns off, but you can't trade your f-pawn for the g-pawn because that gives me a passed pawn. And also your rook is here, so to stop black's rook from attacking everything, we need to put our rook somewhere in a defensive posture, probably not there, so that black can't start attacking after f4. Bishop here check would be a good move too, but f4 just loses. It's very bad. Rook c4 is good. That just loses by force. You have to play king f3. Um, and it's got to be losing because I have a pass pawn. Your knight's terrible. Bishop e5 is coming. But this just loses because I win a pawn. Yeah, he didn't play. Actually, his move's better. In a blitz game, I would just take this and then take this and I win. But he played this, which is actually better. Yeah, that wins. Yeah, because if king h4, the knight's hanging or there's probably mates. Yeah, bishop here, bishop here, mate. So, yeah. F4 was a real blunder. You don't want to put all of your pieces on dark squares when your opponent has one bishop and it's a dark squared bishop. And, that, and he, that's exactly what white did. Very risky strategy. And the knight's very poor on, on h2. So here, white should just sit tight. Rook b3, Papa John's. Rook d3, rook b3, rook d3. And it should be a draw. But yeah, now, now it's just losing. He just lost material. Whoa. Now this could have been a tactical trick or could have been a blunder. I'm actually guessing it was done intentionally. He played rook here, hoping... Now, if you're going to do that, you have to make a lot of random rook moves first and then do it. So your opponent is relaxed, right? Um, that you can get a happy ending after he's relaxed. So the, playing this right away, he's hoping black is just thinking white's moving his rook, doing nothing, and I'll take this pawn, and he'll miss that I opposed rooks. I don't think he hung his rook. I think he did it on purpose, hoping that 
black would ignore it and just take on g5. But yeah, if you are going to do that, you move your rook randomly back and forth, and then you go to b2. Ah. Good technique, mate. Good job. So not the best game, but, you know, pretty good. Um, yeah, if, if you guys, if, that, if those were chess.com ratings, I'm going to have to report you guys. Yeah, yeah, King G3 was bad. Oh. Go trying not to learn. Yeah, well that that's the last game we're gonna look at. We're gonna we're gonna end the stream and it's gonna be a lot of fun or something. Yeah. I've streamed too much. Thanks for the hundred cent to juices emblem if I didn't I think I did mention it. Yeah. Etc. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching. You guys are the best, etc. Uh, I rated you yesterday. Guess I'm rating you then. Yeah. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Theoretically, I'm streaming from uh, 3 to 7, but I always stream really late. So I could stream 3 to 7. I could take the day off, but I'll probably stream 3 to 7. That seems likely this time. Anyway. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye.